started here. Yeah. Carpet Dave's ready. Yes. And I said, uh, pray for me. Yes. Uh, one of these days, I, if I can sit and talk with you about it. I'd love to. Yeah. I will never forget to pray for you. Okay. No. <laughs> I will. Thank you. Are we doing that right now? All right. All righty. I have handouts for everybody. Don't get too close. Yeah, there you go. All righty, we'll get started. Let's pray together, and then you have handouts on your table, and we'll get started. Father, love you today. Thank you so much for the time that we could uh, just bunker down here for the next few minutes to to look at a little bit deeper how you've called to be an influence in the world in which we live. We take that word very seriously because every day, no matter if it's a good decision, bad decision, we're still influencing people that you've placed in our lives. Help us to take it seriously in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So I titled this as a kind of a tee off of what we've been studying in church this morning, is how to be just a good steward of your faithfulness. I believe this, that everything that you have in life is a gift from God. I, you, I know we work for it. I know you, you work hard for things you get in life. You take care of things. But everything you have from your health to your material possessions to the people around in your life, they're all a gift from God. So as we look at our, even, even your salvation, for by grace are you saved through faith, not of as a gift of God. So everything that you have in life is a gift from him. So God expects you to do what with your gifts? To manage them, to take care of them. He calls in the Bible to be a good steward of your gift. And as a steward is an old English word for manage it. So anything that God gives me, I just manage it. I take good care of it. I make sure that I'm very productive in what he's given me because one day I'm going to stand before him and he says, what did you do with what I gave you? Remember he gave us even the story of the talents. He gave some this much, some this much, some this much. And then when he came back, he said, okay, guys, come here. And he kept them accountable for everything that he had. So this is the same thing with our influence in life. God expects you to use your influence to help other people. In your notes, what is influence? The Cambridge Dictionary even defines influence as the power to affect how someone develops, acts, or thinks. And God expects you to what? Be an influencer for those around you. So some days, as we look at this in our, in our text, is how should you want to be influential? You know, it's quite sad to say, you know what, I just don't care about anybody else today. I, I got enough problems of my own. I'm just going to take care of Pastor Drew today. Everybody else, you're going to be put on hold. And so we kind of shove them off to the back. And then the next day, maybe the same thing the next day. And you're starting to think just about yourself. In fact, Jesus commands that we use our influence for goodness. And this is where we talked about the fruit of the Spirit this morning in this world. You were put on this earth and here to influence for good what God wants you to do. 
And we know there's nothing in us that's good except for Jesus Christ. You understand that, right? The only goodness we do is because of what he does through our lives, and that is displaying his goodness. So in your notes, someday we're going to give an account. The first blank is an account to God of how well we influenced others for good and only for God. In Matthew 5.16, the verse this morning said, let your light shine. Why? Why do we let our lives shine? He goes on to just help us. We don't have to be kind of like uh, guessing how we light. He says, so that I'm going to have my light shine so that others will see the good that you do in me and will praise your Father which is in heaven. That's why we let our light shine. Jesus wants us to waste our influence. You don't buy a lamp and then you hide it. You never put a bulb in it. You never light it. You never plug it in. You never use it. In the same way, it's wasteful to refuse your influence. Later, Jesus said in your notes, you are like salt for the whole human race. So we look at this, and why does God want us to be salt of the earth? We kind of highlighted that in our service this morning, because salt is season. Salt is season. It improves taste, and it preserves. In your notes, salt seasons, improves taste, it preserves, and those three things God wants you to do with your life and the culture as influence. So God wants you to season the world, to make it tastier, to make it better, to preserve it. He goes on to say he wants you to improve the world. How do you improve the, the way that you live? He's placed you where you are for a reason. I've talked to some people that say, I just got to move. I said, why? I just where I'm at. And I said, do you realize maybe this is where God wants you? But there's just so much going on. I said, that's why you're needed where you are. He's put you there because this world in which you live in that neighborhood where you work, they need some more salt. They need some more light. If I pulled you out and you went to wherever you wanted to go, I have no more salt and light there. So he says, I want you to improve the world and where you are. And then he wants you to preserve it and to keep it from getting more rotten than what it is. He said, how can it get any more rotten than it is now? Yeah, it can. So that's what it does. It seasons it, it improves it, and preserves it. He doesn't want the world to spoil. In fact, Jeremiah 15, 19 says, you are to influence them. Do not let them influence you. So we need to be a positive influence in our world. There's a problem that needs to be fixed and a cause that needs to be advanced, and God calls us to be sight and law, salt in that situation by being a Christian, influencing the world on behalf of Jesus Christ. And in your notes, we all influence somebody. Do you realize that every day you have an influence on somebody? You might not think you do. People watch you. People look at you. They see what you do. They, they are influenced by your actions, what you say. Do you match up what's inside, what you're doing on the outside? So, and God expects us to be good stewards of that influence for his kingdom's sake. In your notes... He didn't give you us our influence to be selfish on our part, but he wants us to, to use that so that we might share the good news about him so that we can advance and build the kingdom of God. So what is exactly in your notes at the bottom, a kingdom builder? If we're salt and light, and we're building the kingdom of God here on this earth. The first one of this, you have a great purpose to live for. A kingdom builder is someone who has a great purpose to live for. And for the Christians, we have the greatest purpose of all, and that is to rescue people from eternity going to hell. We, that's what I said at the end of the sermon. We want to depopulate hell the best we can from people going there. Kingdom builders demonstrate a great commitment to the Great Commission and the Great Commandment. The second thought is this, great principles to live by. A kingdom builder is one who has a different source to which we draw from. God's eternal truth, the Bible. That's where we live, the direction. The, th second one is, uh, the third one is this, great power to live on. Great power to live on. We operate different from the world. We have the what? Who lives within us? Who are we sealed by? The Holy Spirit. We don't talk, I'm, I, I've got some sermons that I've been working on on the Holy Spirit. We don't preach a lot on the Holy Spirit. We don't do a lot of Bible studies on the Holy Spirit. Wouldn't it be good to, what is his role? He is God. I mean, he's one of the three of the Trinity, right? We know, we talk about God a lot. He's God. We talk about Jesus, what he did. What about the Holy Spirit? Where do you get the power to live on every day? From the Holy Spirit. Who lives within you? The Holy Spirit. 
So he calls us to live on that power. And then the last thought, if you turn over the page. Did I give it to you? Great people to live with? You can write it in. I don't think it's there. I think it's the fourth one that didn't get to the bottom of it. Is we just got great people to live with. Well, I love you guys. I get to come to church and have church with you guys. You're my family. You're, you're the support group for Leanne and myself and then our family and our extended family. So we have great people to live with. We are kingdom builders together, and that's how I close my sermon. We're not salt and light by ourselves. We're one big salt shaker together <laughs> to encourage one another. So there are at least seven principles, as I told you, what we're going to talk about, that we learn from Scripture, how to influence as a kingdom builder in this world. And the first thought is this. Everybody has influence. The E is for everybody. Everybody has influence. What you do with influence that you currently have will determine whether or not you gain more influence. Jesus talked to this about the talents. He gave some, he gave a little bit more, and he gave more. And what do you do with your talents? He's going to give you more. How are you being a steward, a manager of what you have been given by God? How are you being a steward or a manager by the influence that God has given to you? So remember, this is what I like to be. Have a good day. Be good. Really? Yes, Jesus says, be salt, but be light, but you cannot. So he comes back and say, have influence, but he says you need to be. That's who we are to influence this world around us. Influence is not a position in your notes. Influence is not authority. Influence is not fame. Influence is not wealth. You can have any of those and not actually have influence on somebody's life. Influence comes from within. It's who you are. It's God's goodness coming out in your lifestyle. The second one is this. Of the seven, God expects me to use the influence he has given me. So not only does everybody have it, God's given it to you. He expects you to use that in a good way. Influence is like a muscle. The more you use it, the stronger you get, the better you feel, the more you can function. You lay around for a month. How about if you just gone out? We went out to a restaurant the other day. We sat for two hours. You try to get up after sitting on a bench for two hours. It's like, ah, let me get my sea legs back underneath me. Ah, don't you want to stretch? And I've been sitting too long. You've ever say that? Well, that's the same thing with influence. Some of us let our influence sit too long. We need to exercise it just like a muscle. And the more you use it, the more it grows. It takes courage to do that. So Jesus challenged us to let our light shine and to be salt, to pre preserve this world, and it flavors it. The third one is this. My influence is for the benefit of others. It's not for you. Jesus never gave you anything basically, to use for yourself. You remember the gifts that he's given to us? I talked about this last week. He's given you all a spiritual gift. He's given it, why? To be used. And mostly those gifts are to be used in the church. So it's different from talents. It's your gifts. But we've given us influence as well, and influence is always what? For some other purpose. When God gives you influence, it isn't for the purpose of making you rich or famous, especially our own pleasure. He gives us influence because he uses it to help people be drawn to him. So when we are good and we show our goodness through Jesus Christ living in us and we are the salt, we are the light, it draws people to him. It's a benefiting other people. Number four is if I'm not influencing them, they are influencing me. I raised three kids and I don't know if you've been around it or you've helped other people or you yourself have been there yourself. You start acting like the people you hang around with. You can't help it. That's who your network is. Those are the people that you've drawn closer to you. And if you're not influencing them, I can dare you the opposite is true. They're going to start influencing your lifestyle and how you behave and how you think and what you do. I've told you this in a sermon about a year or so ago. You know, as I was going through high school, my mom says, when you look for a friend, do your best to try to find somebody that's walking closer to God than you are. Not to esteem them and hold them up, but they're just going to draw you closer to God with them. The opposite is true. You find somebody that's not close to God and you hang around, and guess where you're going to be in a short while? You're not going to be close. Why? Because you're influencing one another. The fifth one is this. I will answer to God for how I use my influence. Yes, you will. I'm eternally accountable to God how I use the influence that God gave me in this life. What do I do with my influence? It's temporary in this world what matters, but eternally. God's going to hold me accountable how I use my influence. 
I just can imagine. You ever just, uh, just dream what heaven's going to be like? But one day, we're going to stand before him. And I don't picture we're all going to be lined up waiting to get through the pearly gates. Okay, Drew, Leanne, Grandma, he's not going to do that when we get there. But you always picture what it's going to be like. But I do know this. He's going to ask us, what have you done with what I've given you? You're going to be accountable for it. And that's the beam of seat. The great white judgment is for those that do not believe. But we come before him for as believers. So we look at this. I want to influence the world to be salt and light. That's my calling as a kingdom builder. Number six is, if I use my influence well, God will give me more. So if I'm John and Nancy and, and investing my life into them and being faithful as an influencer to them, what God has called me, then he gives me Sam and then he gives me Carpet Dave and then he gives me you know, Richard. Then it goes on and on. And you, you start growing your network of influencers and helping people. But if I'm stingy and don't do anything, what good am I to John and Nancy? God's going to say, I need somebody else in their life. Somebody who's going to take it seriously because they need me and I need you to grow. I, I thought of the verse this week. Just, uh, thinking of it that morning, John sends me a verse every morning. And I thought about this as I was in bed, didn't even get my feet on the floor. I was going through different verses, and the verse he sent me that morning, that morning was the one I was thinking in bed because I was thinking of Psalms, and it was, there's a new song that came out about honey out of a rock. I don't know if you've heard it. But it goes on to say, taste and see that the Lord is good. He's good. And I was thinking about goodness this week, so I was running through verses, and I wake up, I think it was Friday morning, or Thursday or Friday, it was the end of the week, because I'm wrapping up my sermon thinking about, John sends me that verse, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. I said, <laughs> Just a confirmation that he is good. He is good. So if I use my influence well, God will give me more. Because he's going to come to us and says in Matthew, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in the few things. I will put you in charge of what? Many things. He says, Come and share in your master's happiness. Number seven is this, and I close with this. The path to greater influence is service and generosity. So what do I do with my influence? What's the path that I need to take as a Christian? Well, you take that influence to serve other people. You say, take that influence is to be generous with your life and what God has given to you. We assume that we must climb to a, maybe, I'll wait till I get up the ring of the ladder and, and get to this position. Or if I wait till I'm here and get this, or I'm more secure and I get this going for me and I wait and I wait. You're going to be waiting your whole life because that's not what Jesus told you to do. You'll never achieve that because that's the worldly thinking. So you can't wait to have more influence just to wait to, for something to happen in your life. But Jesus gave us an, an an influence definition that he said, remember, before he left the disciples, he was in the upper room with him. What did he do before they had the end of that night and went out and sang a song and they had what the Lord's Supper, he changed the Passover to the Lord's Supper. What did he do? He took a towel, basin of water, and what did he do? He was a servant, washed their feet. So I'm thinking, as you come to the end of your life, we don't know when that would be, what would be your last thing that you want to be remembered for? Jesus said, he showed it to us, being a servant, giving away your life to other people, serving others, being generous with what he had. He put it this way in Matthew 20, 26, in your notes, but among you, it will be different. <laughs> we could just stop right there. <laughs> but among you, it's going to be different for you, Sam. It's going to be different for you. It's going to be different for you, Mario. For you, it's going to be different. Whoever wants to be a leader among you, must be what? Your servant. It's going to be different from the world teaches you. We influence people with far more powerful results when we lead by serving. When we influence, that is leading, when we influence others by what? Serving them. That's how we show our influence. That's the power of influence. Father, love you today. Thank you for this extended study on the word goodness, influence, which you have given to us just to help other people. We have a world around us that's just crazy. The things that we're hearing on the news, what's going on in our country, even in our own state, and our own county, just like we wouldn't have even thought of this stuff 10 years ago, let alone five years ago. And it's happening before our eyes. But God, you have left us here for a reason. And as hard as it is, discouraging, frustrating, 
aggravating sometimes. We wake up and hear, my gosh, that's what's going on today? How can... But you've given us to be different, to be distinctly different, to be salt and to be light with the influence to help other people be drawn to you. And may we do that this week. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.